so today in this particular video we are going to discuss the solutions to the questions that we are asked in the major question paper so in that particular question paper three questions were asked and so sorry four questions were asked the first question was that you have to write a c program that asks the user for an integer array passes it to a function and then inside the function computes a average of all array elements average of only odd elements average of only even elements and then finally prints all three averages so we have to write a program so so let me write a program here i will quickly write the program and then i will make you understand this this program So I am writing. These are the three functions that we will use. So you could have named anything these every these uh, these functions, and I am writing the names here. And you could have used some other approach, but here I am showing one specific approach or one specific program. so first i have declared three functions here so you can see from uh, from the screen itself that i have used three functions okay the names of the three functions are the first function as you can see it is float all average float all average it is one function float even average it is another function and float odd average so sorry i have placed a space here it's odd average okay all average will return a float value so why i am writing here a float because i want that average we know that average can be a float so this particular function will return the average of all the elements in this array and we know that average will be a float so it will return a float value similarly this will return this function will return the average of even numbers and this will return the average of odd numbers okay so these are the three functions now let me write the main program main okay so as you can see the first part of the question is write a c program that asks the user for an integer array so we have to take the integer array from the user itself so let me declare the array first you can name anything this array and let's keep the size as 100 okay and let's use some variables also so i am using a variable let's say n let's see why we will use it now so here i am giving the array size as 100 let's keep that only 100 elements are allowed so you are not required to check if the user is entering more the more elements so we want only 100 elements should be in the array so first of all we have to ask user to enter the elements of an array so let's print the information to the user enter the elements of an array so i am asking the user to enter the elements of an array and then after that we will run a for loop okay let's say we have to use 100 elements so we have to take 100 elements as input so i plus plus and then we know that we should use a scan if function to take these elements okay and all these elements let's say they are integers so we will use percent d and we will store these elements in the array so here we are storing these elements in the array so up to this point the first part of the question is done 
what was the first part write a c program that asks the user for an integer array okay so we have written up to this part that asks the user for an integer array so user has entered the integer array now we have to pass the array to a function and that inside that function we have to compute the average of all array elements average of only odd elements average of only even elements and then finally prints all three averages so let's define three floating variables so it will be average of all okay average all this will be average even and this will be average odd so these three variables so in average average all so in this we will call this particular function and this particular function will take the array as input and let's give this 100 100 means 100 elements are there okay so in this function we will compute the average of all the elements and the next average uh, even so here we will call even average function average function and it is also going to take array and the size as input and average odd this particular value is going to store the value returned by odd average okay so after that we have to print these values so print f all average is equal to percent f comma even average is equal to percent f odd average is equal to percent f so it will be all, average all average even and average odd okay so these are the so this is printing these values and at the end we have the return zero okay so the main function is completed now we have to write the these three functions all average even average and odd average so let me write these three functions here on the side so okay so let's first write the definition of all average so it is taking integer array as input and it is taking the this particular value okay and as we know that this will first sum all the elements and then divide by n it will give us the average so let's say float average stores the is, is the variable in which we will store the average and then we have another that is uh, let's say int sum sum is equal to zero so this is our sum or or we can keep this as float float also so let's keep it as float okay then we will run the for loop for because we have to add all the elements i is equal to zero i is less than n i plus plus and in this loop we are going to sum all the elements I, I. okay so now our sum variable will store the sum of all the elements in the array and now we will compute the average the average will be equal to sum divided by n and we will return this average so this ends our average all average function what most of the students has done uh, is that they have taken this variable as int and by taking this variable as int here the computed this average becomes int because int divided by int will give us an int and it is truncating some part of the final value and storing that final value in this average okay so it is the best way or the correct way is to declare this particular uh, variable here as float and then we we won't have any truncated value here or otherwise you can declare it as int here 
and then you can type cast here this particular sum you can do it float sum divided by n and return this average so this is the correct way of writing all average function so this is all average function now we have even average so i will write even average also here so let me write it here only so even average so even average is also taking two inputs let me declare it here so let me write it here so same variables and sum only the difference here is that in the for loop we have to add only even elements okay so we have to add only even elements so we have to check if array i so we know how to check the even elements that is by doing mod operation if array i mod 2 equal to equal to 0 then only we have to do this operation okay so this is the prog this is the complete even average function okay now for the odd average you have to do only one change that instead of if array i is not equal to zero that means it will add only odd elements and then we have to return the average so these are the three functions that we have to write to complete this particular program so this was the solution for question number one however if so you can see that i have used three functions here all average even average and odd average however if there is some student who has written all the three or who has complete computed all the three averages in a single function that will also work but what what i i could see from the solution is that most of the students have declared this variable as int and then they have not used a type casting here so for example the value was some for example the sum was 100 let's say the sum was 100 and the n was let's say 11 then the final value that should have, have been stored in this in in the average should have it should have been 9.09 .09. however because of truncation it will truncate this as it will consider this as int because int divided by int will be int and it will give the value as 9 in in this average and that will be wrong so it is better to use float here type casting here and then the final value that is 9.09 .09, that will be stored in this average so this is the error that most of the students has done so this was question number one now let's discuss the solution to question number second this is question number two of the major exam and in this particular question it is saying that recursive programs are based on a base condition and a recursive condition so we know that rec all recursive programs have a base condition and a recursive condition if they don't have a base condition they will go on uh, repeatedly calling the function again and again till our stack becomes full so every recursive program has a base condition and a recursive condition so for example here we are given the base condition and a recursive condition for a factorial program okay so it is a base condition base condition is saying that if n is less than or equal to one then return one we know that factorial of any number less than or equal to one or that may be factorial of one or a factorial of zero that is equal to one and for the other numbers the factorial is n into factorial of n minus one so this is the recursive condition and this is the base condition so this is an example related to a factorial uh, factorial program so now you were asked to write the base and recursive conditions for the following problems to be solved using recursion so what we have the problem is the first problem is sum of first n natural numbers sum of n where n is the natural number so let's say n is equal to 1 so that means we have to find the sum of first natural number so which one is the first natural number the first natural number is 1 so in that case we have to return 1 okay however if the number is greater than n then we have to return n plus sum of 
n minus 1 or in other words we can do for example if n is equal to 0 then return 0 okay so this will be a base condition and a recursive condition will be n plus sum of n minus 1. Okay, so let me write the base and recursive condition for the first, pro first problem. So it is if n is, is equal to equal to 1, then a return return one else so the recursive condition is else return what we have to return n plus sum of n minus one okay this was a return condition so this is the base and recursive condition for the first part okay now let's see the second one let me remove these things here now let's take the second part okay so the second part is product of first n natural numbers so if so we are discussing about the second part so in the second part if n is equal to 1 okay first n natural numbers that means n equal to 1 so which one is the first natural number that is one so in that case we have to return one else in uh, other cases we have to return n into so it is saying product of first n natural numbers n into product of n minus one okay so let me write the base condition and the recursive condition if n equal to equal to one then i have to return one else return n into product of n minus okay so this is for the second part now let's come to the third part what it is saying that nth power of number a so that means if my function is power so this is my function a raised power n that means i have to return a raised to power n so here also we can check if okay if n equal to equal to zero so there are uh, two parts if n equal to equal to zero we will return we will return one why we have to return one because we know a raised power zero a raised power zero is equal to one so we have to return one else what we have to return we have to return return a int power of a comma n minus so this is the recursive condition a, or we can write the program in other words for example if n equal to equal to one this is the other way we can write it return a else return a into power of a comma n minus Okay, so these are the two methods by which you can write the recursive call for the C point. So this completes the question number two. Now let's discuss the third question. So this is question number third that we have to discuss and it was in the major paper. So consider the memory address of variables A, B, C as 5000, 5008, 5004 respectively. So these are the three variables A, B, and C, and they are stored at locations 5000, 5008, and 5004. And that of pointer variables, and we have three pointer variables, PA, PB, and PC. So address of PA is 4000, PB is 4008, and PC is 4012 respectively. 
assume int and int star both take two bytes and care takes one byte. Now consider the following statements. So let's see the statements now. Int a is equal to 100. So our a is 100. Okay. B is 100. P A is a pointer. So P A is a pointer that stores the address of A. So that means it points here. And P B is another pointer and it is pointing to B. So B P A contains value. What value it will contain? The address of A that is 5000. And P B contains address of B. And what is the address of B? 5008. Now after that, care C. So C is our character variable so it stores y or y we can say it is 89 as key okay probably it is 89 and pc is another pointer that is pointing to c so that means it contains address which address it contains 5004 and we have variables x and y so they don't have any value yet now this statement it is saying x is equal to p a plus 4 so it is in brackets so that means this statement will be first executed p a plus 4 so p a what is p a p a is 5000 5000 plus 4 now p a is an you can see it is an integer pointer p a is an integer pointer and we are given here that integer occupies two bytes so 5000 plus 4 will be actually 5000 plus 8 that is equal to 5008 okay so pa plus 4 will be 5008 why 5008 because each integer occupies two bytes and we are saying we have to add four integer places four integer places means how many bytes eight bytes so it will be 5008 so pa plus 4 is 5008 and the, this star, it means the value stored at 5008. What is the value stored at 5008? So 5008 is this. So it is the address of B. So what is the value stored at B? It is 100. So this value is stored in X. So X will be 100. Are we changing the value of PA? No, we are not changing the value of PA. PA is still 5000. So by this particular statement, only one thing will be changed and that thing is X. So X will get value 100. So this 100 value has been placed in X. Okay. Now let's come here. It is saying that Y is equal to star. Oh, I'm sorry, in question it was B is equal to 200. Okay, so here B will be 200 and this X will also be 200. Now let's come to the second statement, this particular statement. Okay, it is Y is equal to star PB plus this. Let's discuss this particular statement. So here we have two operators. One is this in direction operator and another is plus plus operator. Okay. So, or we can say the increment operator. So in these two operators, this one has the highest precedence. Okay. This operator has highest precedence. So this operator will be performed first. Okay. So what is this operator saying that do the increment of this particular thing? So it will be same as PB is equal to PB plus one. What is PB? PB is 5000, 5008, sorry, plus one. Since PB is pointing to an integer, so this one will mean two bytes. So it will be 5010. Okay. So in PB, the final value will be 5010. However, it is a post increment operation so that means we have to in this particular statement we have to first use the old value of pb and then update this 
with a new value. So what was the old value of PB that is 5008. So in this particular statement, we have to use 5008. And after using this 5008, the value of PB will become 5008. Why? Because it is a post increment. So it is saying star 5008. 5008 is pointing to B. So what is stored in B? That is 200. So this 200 will be stored in Y. So what will be stored in Y? So in Y, we will have 200. And this particular will be updated to 5010. So in PB, we have 5010. Now, came the last statement, this particular statement. It is Z is equal to plus plus star PC. So because of this bracket, this gets the precedence. So it is saying star PC. What is star PC? So this statement will be same as plus plus. What is star PC? Star PC means value stored at that address. What is the value stored at this address? It is Y. So it is Y. Character Y. So incrementing character Y will be the next in, in the next character. What is the next character? Z. Or we can say ASCII value 90. So this value Z because it is a pre-increment. Pre-increment means that we have to increment it first and give that value to this variable. So Z containers the character Z or we can say the ASCII value 90. Okay, so this end is the program. Now after that it is saying what will be the values A, B. So A will be 100, B will be 200, X and C. C will be Y or we can say 89, X will be 100, okay, Y will be 200, Sorry, sorry, X will also be 200 because it is storing the value of value of this variable P. It is 200. Y will be 200. Z will be this character Z or we can say ASCII value 90. PA. We have not updated PA anywhere. So PA will be 5000 and PB will be 5010. Why? Because of this post increment. So PB will be 5000. So these will be the values stored in these variables when these particular statements. So this is question number third. Now let's discuss question number fourth. Now let's discuss question number four. So you can see that in question number four, we have to find errors in the following program. So this was the program and we have to find the errors. Now let's come from the start. So on the first line, there is no error. Okay. So this particular line is correct. Second, we are defining a symbolic constant. So this is also fine. Third int main. This is also fine. Then we have this opening brace. It is also fine. Now on this line, we have int a, b and array. So we are declaring some variables. It is also fine. On this particular line, we are declaring a pointer P and it is storing the address of a variable A. And we are also declaring another pointer that is Q. So this is also fine. There is no error in this particular line. Now let's come here. We are declaring a pointer R and it is getting the value of address of C. But you can see that we have not declared a variable C up to this point. So up to this point, we have not declared the variable C. The variable C is declared after that. And we know that the, so here we have a comma. So the operations or we can say the expressions separated by a comma, they are evaluated from left to right. So this one will be evaluated first star r is equal to a and c but it will see that c has not been declared anywhere okay because the c is declared after this particular statement so this is an error okay the correct correct statement should have been c should have been declared first then we should have star r is equal to a and c this was fine but this is not fine Okay, so in this particular line, we have an error. So this particular line, we have an error. 
then let's come so this is the first error on this line now let's come here it is saying star q is equal to 10 so we are storing the value 10 at an address stored by q but you can see that q has been declared but it has not been initialized so q is not carrying any address basically q is carrying a garbage value so we are storing value 10 at some memory address that has not been allocated to our program so this one is also an error this particular thing why this is an error because q is not storing the valued address okay so this is an error this is the second error then let's come on this line it is saying array plus plus we are incrementing the value of array pointer arr pointer so we know arr is an array pointer and the increment decrement operation is not a valid operation on an array pointer okay or we can say or an on an array name the array name or the value stored in this array name is considered as a constant pointer and we cannot update a constant pointer so this is also an error so this is the third error in this particular program now here we have a pointer p and in this p we are storing this particular address this is fine because array stores the address of first integer in this particular array in this array and p is also an integer pointer so this address can be stored in p then we are doing p plus plus so we are incrementing the value of p p is an integer pointer and it is allowed to increment the value of a integer pointer so this one is not allowed but this one is allowed okay then after that we are declaring a variable character variable and we are storing 70 in this 70 means that in d we will be storing the character whose ascii value is 70 okay so this is fine then we are st starting a switch case switch d and here you can see d is a character so and d here it is a character or we can say it is an integer expression in the switch case the allowed values are integer and character or any expression that evolves to an integer okay so this is also fine then we have opening brace of switch this is fine then we have case one so here it should be a constant okay we know the value associated with a case it should be a constant so here this particular character is a constant so it is fine so this line is also fine this break is also fine okay then we are coming here case a so a you can see a is a variable here we have declared a as a variable and here we are using a but we know the associated value with the case it should be a constant it cannot be a variable so it is an error here so it is a fourth error then this one is fine this one is fine then we come here case 2 plus 5 into 3 so we know this should be a constant okay here it should be a constant and you can see that this expression evolved evolves to a constant 5 into 3 is 15 16 17 17 is a constant so it is fine this line is also okay and this line is also okay. then we have case symbol so symbol is replaced by this 70 and 70 is a constant so it will work okay 70 is a constant it will work this will also work and this will also work now we have here case 70 so we already have a case 17 here because this also means case 17 and here we have again case 17 so we have duplicate cases and it will result in a conflict so this one is also an error so this is the fifth error in this particular program then this is fine this is fine this is also fine this is also fine this one is also fine then we have a closing brace of switch this is okay return zero and then we have closing brace of main. 
So you can see that in this particular program, there were one, two, three, four, five errors. So there were total five errors. Okay. And this particular thing was not an error. And this particular thing was also not an error. Some students have written that this switch in the switch we have character, but here we are writing an integer. We know that character itself is also an integer in terms of ASCII values. Okay. So these cases are all okay. Only this particular case is not okay. Why? Because we are using a variable and this particular case also has an issue because it is a duplicate value used in some other case. So total there we are only five errors. So these were the all four questions that we are asked in your major exams. And this particular video explains the solution to every problem that was there in the question paper. Thank you everyone for joining.